December 19th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Habakkuk chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. The following is the message which God revealed to Habakkuk the prophet. How long, Lord, must I cry for help, but you do not listen? I call out to you violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you force me to witness injustice? Why do you put up with wrongdoing? Destruction and violence confront me. Conflict is present and one must endure strife. For this reason the law lacks power and justice is never carried out. Indeed, the wicked intimidate the innocent. For this reason, justice is perverted. Look at the nations and pay attention. You will be shocked and amazed. For I will do something in your lifetime that you will not believe even though you are forewarned. Look, I am about to empower the Babylonians, that ruthless and greedy nation. They sweep across the surface of the earth, seizing dwelling places that do not belong to them. They are frightening and terrifying. They decide for themselves what is right. Their horses are faster than leopards and more alert than wolves in the desert. Their horses gallop. Their horses come a great distance. Like a vulture, they swoop down quickly to devour their prey. All of them intend to do violence. Every face is determined. They take prisoners as easily as one scoops up sand. They mock kings and laugh at rulers. They laugh at every fortified city. They build siege ramps and capture them. They sweep by like the wind and pass on, but the one who considers himself a god will be held guilty. Lord, you have been active from ancient times. My sovereign God, you are immortal. Lord, you have made them your instrument of judgment. Protector, you have appointed them as your instrument of punishment. You are too just to tolerate evil. You are unable to condone wrongdoing. So why do you put up with such treacherous people? Why do you say nothing when the wicked devour those more righteous than they are? You made people like fish in the sea, like animals in the sea. They have no ruler. The Babylonian tyrant pulls them all up with a fish hook. He hauls them in with his throw net. When he catches them in his drag net, he is very happy. Because of his success, he offers sacrifices to his throw net and burns incense to his drag net. For because of them, he has plenty of food and more than enough to eat. Will he then continue to fill and empty his throw net? Will he always destroy nations and spare none? I will stand at my watch post. I will remain stationed on the city wall. I will keep watching so I can see what he says to me and can know how I should answer when he counters my argument. The Lord responded, Write down this message, record it legibly on tablets so the one who announces it may read it easily. For the message is a witness to what is decreed. It gives reliable testimony about how matters will turn out. Even if the message is not fulfilled right away, wait patiently. For it will certainly come to pass, it will not arrive late. Look, the one whose desires are not upright will faint from exhaustion, but the person of integrity will live because of his faithfulness. Indeed, wine will betray the proud, restless man. His appetite is as big as Sheol's. Like death, he is never satisfied. He gathers all the nations. He seizes all peoples. But all these nations will someday taunt him and ridicule him with proverbial sayings. The one who accumulates what does not belong to him is as good as dead. How long will this go on? He who gets rich by extortion. Your creditors will suddenly attack. Those who terrify you will spring into action and they will rob you. Because you robbed many countries, all who are left among the nations will rob you. You have shed human blood and committed violent acts against lands, cities, and those who live in them. The one who builds his house by unjust gain is as good as dead. He does this so he can build his nest way up high and escape the clutches of disaster. Your schemes will bring shame to your house because you destroyed many nations you will self-destruct. For the stones in the walls will cry out and the wooden rafters will answer back. The one who builds a city by bloodshed is as good as dead. He who starts a town by unjust deeds. Be sure of this. The Lord who commands armies has decreed. 
The nation's efforts will go up in smoke. Their exhausting work will be for nothing. For recognition of the Lord's sovereign majesty will fill the earth, just as the waters fill up the sea. You who force your neighbor to drink wine are as good as dead. You who make others intoxicated by forcing them to drink from the bowl of your furious anger so you can look at their genitals. But you will become drunk with shame, not majesty. Now it is your turn to drink and expose your uncircumcised foreskin. The cup of wine in the Lord's right hand is coming to you and disgrace will replace your majestic glory. For you will pay in full for your violent acts against Lebanon. Terrifying judgment will come upon you because of the way you destroyed the wild animals living there. You have shed human blood and committed violent acts against lands, cities, and those who live in them. What good is an idol? Why would a craftsman make it? What good is a metal image that gives misleading oracles? Why would its creator place his trust in it and make such mute, worthless things? The one who says to wood, wake up, is as good as dead. He who says to speechless stone, awake, can it give a reliable guidance? It is overlaid with gold and silver. It has no life's breath inside it. But the Lord is in his majestic palace. The whole earth is speechless in his presence. This is a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet. Lord, I have heard the report of what you did. I am awed, Lord, by what you accomplished. In our time, repeat those deeds. In our time, reveal them again. But when you cause turmoil, remember to show us mercy. God comes from Timon, the sovereign one from Mount Paran, Selah. His splendor covers the skies. His glory fills the earth. He is as bright as lightning. A two-pronged lightning bolt flashes from his hand. This is the outward display of his power. Plague goes before him. Pestilence marches right behind him. He takes his battle position and shakes the earth. With a mere look, he frightens the nations. The ancient mountains disintegrate. The primeval hills are flattened. He travels on the ancient roads. I see the tents of Kushan overwhelmed by trouble. The tent curtains of the land of Midian are shaking. Is the Lord mad at the rivers? Are you angry with the rivers? Are you enraged at the sea? Is this why you climb into your horse-drawn chariots, your victorious chariots? Your bow is ready for action. You commission your arrows. Selah. You cause flash floods on the earth's surface. When the mountains see you, they shake. The torrential downpour sweeps through. The great deep shouts out. It lifts its hands high. The sun and moon stand still in their courses. The flash of your arrows drives them away. The bright light of your lightning quick spear. You furiously stomp on the earth. You angrily trample down the nations. You march out to deliver your people, to deliver your special servant. You strike the leader of the wicked nation, laying him open from the lower body to the neck. Selah. You pierce the heads of his warriors with a spear. They storm forward to scatter us. They shout with joy as if they were plundering the poor with no opposition. But you trample on the sea with your horses on the surging, raging waters. I listened and my stomach churned. The sound made my lips quiver. My frame went limp as if my bones were decaying and I shook as I tried to walk. I long for the day of distress to come upon the people who attack us. When the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, when the olive trees do not produce in the field yield no crops, when the sheep disappear from the pen and there are no cattle in the stalls, I will rejoice because of the Lord. I will be happy because of the God who delivers me. The sovereign Lord is my source of strength. He gives me the agility of a deer. He enables me to negotiate the rugged terrain. This prayer is for the song leader. It is to be accompanied by stringed instruments. God, the, the book of Habakkuk is so uh, amazing and beautiful and, and echoes so much of our own life. And I think sometimes because these minor prophets are kind of shorter, thus being minor prophets, and kind of stuck in the back of the Old Testament, uh, 
we may not read them as much. We may not hear about them as much. They not, may not be quoted as much. But what a powerful, powerful opportunity to see exactly what we do. <laughs> Where we see Habakkuk at the very beginning fussing at you. I do that all the time. And I know it's wrong, but I do it. I, I get into these modes where I'm com so completely baffled by what's going on that I actually question what you're doing. Like I have any authority in this world to question you in the slightest. But just like Habakkuk at the very beginning, he's he's whining. Lord, must I cry out for for help? And for how long? When are you going to listen to me? And are you joking me? You're using the Babylonians who are way worse than we are, the people of Judah, to destroy us. You can't do that. You're a just God. <laughs> Yeah, it, those words remind me of very similar words I've used. Granted, not referring to Babylonia and, and Judah, but even things in my own life where I see other people get things that I think I deserve and how dare you gave it to them and not to me. And uh, yeah, it's just amazing. It, it, I think the powerful thing, though, uh, about a Habakkuk is, is his heart comes around. You... You remind him of your power. You remind him of your sovereignty. You remind him of your pure justice. Uh, you also remind him very clearly that you know what you're doing. <laughs> that you are God. A and at the end, we see this incredibly powerful heart transforma transformation of him having faith and trust in your will and timing. And we seem to work so hard at getting to that point. There's no reason in the world why we shouldn't trust your will and your timing. But the reason that we don't is because we're selfish. And because we're not getting what we want. And we're not getting it in the time that we want. Or I guess I should say me because I definitely do this. Then we question you. Uh, then it becomes baffling to us. Uh, even though you have done nothing to cause that to be questioned. But I love the ending where Habakkuk is like, everything can go wrong we can have no food we can have no crops we can have have no animals we can have people attack us and guess what i am going to rejoice because of the lord and i will be happy because the god delivers me the sovereign lord is going to be my source of strength and he's going to help me with everything he's going to give me agility to negotiate all of the ups and downs of my life. And if I constantly seek him, I've got this. Because it's the Lord God who is in control. God, this is such in three short chapters, such a powerful part of the Bible. And it shows our hearts even to today. Habakkuk wasn't unique in his thought process. We, unfortunately, all do this throughout our lifetimes. One of the things that you talk about in this unique uh, conversation with a prophet, usually we see prophets going out to the nations and, and declaring things that you've given them. And here we see more of an intimate relationship between you and Habakkuk. And in chapter 2, uh, where it said, Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by his faith. Talking about you will take care of the people who aren't righteous. And Habakkuk and the rest of the people, you don't need to worry about it because I've got this. I will take care of them. But you need to understand the righteous need to trust me. They need to have faith that I will do what is best for you. I always have done what is best for you because I love you and I love you more than you will ever understand. You are my people. You are my nation. And even though what you are going through right now is confusion, confusing and you may not quite understand it, or you may not understand it at all, if you are righteous, you will live your days, sometimes your hours and sometimes your minutes, by faith alone. Faith in what I've done for you, faith in what I'm currently doing for you, and faith in what I will do for you, because I am your God. God, thank you for such powerful words to remind us 
that our heart is not to seek what we want, how we want it, and in our timing. That we're not supposed to have blinders on in prayer and say, this is what I want and this is how I want it. And then expect that to happen. We should constantly be seeking your will and your timing in that will. And then just like Habakkuk at the end, to worship and glorify you. When all of this takes place, whether, whether it was what we wanted or not. But that worship takes place because it's what you wanted. And because you know what needs to happen here on earth. God, we won't ever understand, at least here on earth, your sovereignty. But we catch amazing glimpses of it throughout your word. Powerful times where you gently remind us with incredible grace and mercy that you've got this. That we can't do this on our own. We can't figure out this world on our own. We can't go through this life on our own. That is only through your strength and full dependence upon you that we will make it. God, thank you for this amazing love that you have for us. So big and so powerful and so sovereign that, that we will never ever be able to grasp it. But with faith, with righteous faith, we can live our days knowing that you want what is best for us and that no matter what comes, that you are fully aware of what is happening in this world and you will take care of us. We love you so much, God. In your son's name I pray, amen. <laughs>